very minimal changes. Um, here is a glomerulus with a fairly unremarkable appearance. But later in the disease, you can have thickening of the glomerular basement membranes and seeing those characteristic uh, lucencies or holes or spikes along the capillary loops for which the immune complexes reside. Additionally, you can see that there is some podocyte detachment, which have this enlarged and reactive plasmacytoid appearance. And this can correspond to the stage um, of membranous ultrastructurally. So there's four stages of membranous nephropathy that are identified ultrastructurally. In stage one, the immune deposits don't show any significant reaction to the underlying glomerular basement membrane that's seen earlier in the disease. In stage two, you have the spike formation. In stage three, there's intramembranous immune deposits. And in stage four, there will be electron lucencies as well as electron densities. And this has some prognostic significance as when you have significant intramembranous deposits, even with successful immunosuppressive therapy, it will, the course of proteinuria will be protracted as it takes some time for these immune complexes to resolve and remodel the glomerular basement membranes back to normal or near normal. Membranous nephropathy within any antigen and podocytes I will show a diffuse and global granular capillary loop pattern for IgG. And ultrastructurally, we can see here global uh, subepithelial deposits. This particular example shows stage one immune deposits. And this pattern is relatively nonspecific and is seen within multiple podocyte antigens. And so from the immunofluorescent findings alone, you may not uh, necessarily be able to identify which antigen type it is without further immunostaining. Membranous nephropathy in podocyte antigens usually has similar intensity of C3 staining to IgG, and this could be important um, because some membranous antigens um, actually have less C3 staining, of which are the protocoherent antigens that we'll discuss later. In 2009, there was a landmark discovery by Dr. Lawrence Back. Um, at Boston Medical College that the phospholipase A2 receptor was the dominant antigen in membranous nephropathy. This was identified through serum immunoprecipitation with human glomerular extract, and that um, showed reactivity from the patient serum with a 185 kilodalton band, of which corresponded to phospholipase A2 receptor. PLA2R co-localized with IgG within the glomerular immune deposit, showing that they exist in the same space, and 70% of patients had reactivity um, against this protein. CHSD7A was also identified by this methodology in 2014. Immunostaining can identify an antigen type on a kidney biopsy. Um, here's what you would see for PLA2 or NTHSD7A. In negative immunostain, you're going to still see some background staining in glomeruli because there is expression within podocytes. However, a positive result, there will be granular capillary loop staining. With cases that are PLA2 R and THSD7A negative, it's important to look for secondary etiologies of disease. From the KDIGO 2021 um, clinical practice guidelines for glomerular diseases, um, in patients who are PLA2 or negative, you would want to do at least age-related cancer screening. Look for autoimmune disease, particularly lupus, as membranous lupus nephritis is, um, is also fairly common. Uh, sarcoidosis. Several medications are associated with membranous nephropathy, as well as some infections. And we know now that many of these secondary etiologies are actually associated with some different underlying antigens. And because of that, we've geared away from a primary versus secondary membranous to an antigen-based classification. Um, so as, as little as five years ago, if you had PLA2R or THSC7A membranous, it would be considered primary. It's a renal limited autoimmune disease. And then every membranous due to everything else was considered secondary. But often there were times where the everything else wasn't identified, but being PLA2R or THSC7A negative, the type of membranous was thought to be primary. We now knowing multiple different antigen types, we can help identify the disease associations. Um, so an antigen-based classification is preferred. 
So there's multiple reasons why we should look for a target antigen. One of the most important would be through non-invasive monitoring of disease activity, which can help inform treatment. And this is available for PLA2R and THSD7A. While not yet available for other antigens, um, it, they likely will be in the future as there has been serologic detection among multiple new identified membranous antigens, but will take some time to um, identify performance characteristics of serologic assays, collect you know, patients at multiple different time points, particularly for rare antigens that could take a long time to do. And to have a serologic test be useful, the antibodies um, have to be, or the test